so Welcome back to the 71st episode of Good, Bad, or Bad, but the show where we watch terrible movies and tell you if you should too. Again, it's not Ryan's, babe. Oh, it is coming. Oh. I'm sorry. I know. It's, we're just we're dr- Now, see, we set that. We put that pin in, and we're just going to take forever to pull it out. Yeah. <laughs> Slowly. Here, here's the carrot. Here's us. <laughs> Keep coming back until we finally do it. Uh, it should be within the next five to ten episodes. <laughs> um, but until that time... As always, I'm your host, Mr. Brian Shilligo, sitting across the good, better, bad, bad table, the other host, the creator of the table, <laughs> Mr. Hey. Kyle Hinton. Uh, this was a Facebook recommendation from somebody, which I will insert now. I, I don't know how to feel about that person anymore. <laughs> this movie is the... Thank you? <laughs> and I, giant question mark? And I, I will never be the same. This movie... Is one of the strangest films we've done, I think. Yes. And I, I we say that often, but this is one of the strangest. Well, it, it starts at 11, and then we see where it goes from there. E- yes. It's... I forgot to fucking do my notes. Shit! I have them. I forgot to... I, I have my... Hold on. Give me two seconds. God damn it. <laughs> Father son cage fighting. That's pretty much all you have to know. <laughs> the movie is called three hundred and sixty five days. But it's on YouTube as Deadly Attraction, which both are fitting names. Mm-hmm. Uh, the movie does take place over 365 days. The math at times in the credits is a is, little confusing. Oh, yeah. It's a little, uh, <laughs> a little hard to follow. Yeah, There are times where it says 60 days later when it actually means this is the 60th day. Um, because it, it says 60 days later from the 40th day. So it was like the 104th day or, or whatever. <clears throat> and then the next title card says the 65th day. And I was like, wait a second. What? <laughs> <laughs> this movie is directed and written by, and I'm not going to pronounce this name right. It's spelled M-E-N-E-T-I-E T. Ejeye, E J E Y E, Minute Minute Ejeye, Minita Minita. We're just gonna call him Trigger. We're gonna call him Trigger because that is his character's name. He plays a role in the film. He plays Trigger. Who has a very (laughs) horrifying subplot that is never. And he soaks it in. I will say this: I think he's an okay actor at times. There are moments where I was like. You just don't know. Then tell me. Hey, I can't help if I don't know what the problem is. I don't want to talk about it. There are scenes that in this movie that are so horrifying and, and awful that they don't belong in this movie. Like, it, it's reminded me of, um, uh, like, our t- um, high kicks. Yes. Where there's, okay, so there's there's a, a, a violent, sec- several violent sexual assaults in this movie that are so out of place in the, the tone of this movie. That it's like high kicks, and then, and then people coming to terms with dealing with that is it's so horrifying and awful. We we have the we also have those mixed completely like feel like juxtaposed with scenes of our main character Mark. Yeah, giving like not quite one liners, but just like being a dick. Yeah, lines of dialogue oh. that are just like completely stilted. Yeah, it's this it's 
This movie is an enigma. It's really, I it was so hard pressed to like understand this film because at times it feels like an incredibly serious, like heartfelt, like exploration of trauma. I believe I was drugged or something. And then uh, we started kissing on the bed. And at other times it's like the this weird, like pulpy, like, Yes. Like soap opera tab, like I do. It's what I want to know is when did you start liking women? I always did. You just never asked. And you, you like women too. Why my ex? Yes, I like women. I didn't know she was your ex. Plus, she's hot. I mean, look at her. It's so hard extremes of like what a film can possibly be and it doesn't like, work. Like it goes everywhere. It, it, it is pretty much like a soap opera. Yeah, because it, it is. It goes it everywhere is. from like underground crime. Yeah. Please, I can pay you back next week. Take him to the back. Come on. It's to, like to, to incest. Uh, yeah. Try to make a move on me. What? How? What? Why would he do that? I don't know. He was massaging my shoulders and and he grabbed my tits. I don't know why he would do that. And it's mainly this movie's about incest. Spoilers. That's mainly what this movie is about. Is the main character Mark really wants to fuck his mom? Both of which are like mid thirties. Okay, no, so let's like get 40. into it because this is. A, uh, I don't understand this okay. movie. The the where when or how old our characters are supposed to be and and how old in like what they're what school they're supposed to be in. I so we're like we're we jump in. Uh, we jump in uh, to uh, well we get the opening credits which are in Papyrus, the Thinking Man's Comic Sans, um, <laughs> and. <laughs> It's day one, opening credit, day one. Damn it. And immediately, this movie looks like porn. It is, it yes. is blank white walls, black leather couches. Yes. There's so many scenes where we go into like an, a cl yeah. clearly like an apartment an building apartment. that he, like, he. A friend or somebody had exactly, or, yeah. Exactly, exactly. But it is blasted white walls completely washed out no and no nothing in the apartments there's never anything hanging on the walls there's like no our, our main hangout spot yeah. for the guy yeah it looks like sam mirovich was yeah yes yeah. and, and it's a straight it's like a shotgun hallway like the room is like six feet wide and it goes like 50 feet back yes. from like kitchen to the living room and they always hang out there and they shoot down the whole the whole thing and so we're introduced to the family in this opening scene, and it is the mom and the dad, and every actor in the, and actress in this movie. I want to try to say this as nice as possible. I can't tell how old they are, and I don't mean that in a bad way necessarily, because they could be older than they look or <laughs> younger than they look. They just, I was constantly like, so the mom is probably supposed to be in her 40s. Mm -hmm. Same with the dad. Mm -hmm. And then the kids both look like they're 35. Yes. And I was like, so you had these kids when you were like eight? <laughs> like what? I don't... Anyways. Um, so we're introduced uh, and there, the mom says she's going to go take a shower. I got to go take a shower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and immediately, first two minutes of this movie... The son walks like, into this, sneaks into the bathroom, and starts spying on his showering mother. <laughs> and we get to see. It. And you thought you had to wait for that pain. No, 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 no. You get it right off the no, bat. No, right off the bat. Uh, and it's funny because they're eating dinner and he like sets his food on the floor in the hallway and then sneaks weird into the bathroom. Guy. It's so weird. His dad even comments on it. What's with your food? And then, but he like gets spooked and runs away and then that scene ends and it cuts to one week later. 
and he walks into his class, his 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 classroom. Again, I don't know if this is college, high school, or elementary school. He could be any of them. I think later it is college because there's mention of a dean. Yeah. But we'll talk about it. So he walks in, immediately cusses out the teacher. Yeah. What the fuck are you looking at? What the fuck are you looking Wait, at? What are you, come on. Come on. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah. Um, Bring on my inner funds for this. Yeah. <laughs> this is basically domestic violence, the movie. Yeah. Domestic violence and incest, the movie. <laughs> so strap in. <laughs> we got to really quickly. It's a very short scene. But uh, Marcus, we're introduced to Marcus. Yes. So there's there's two characters. There's Mark, who's the brother, and Marcus, who's the sister's, at one point, boyfriend. And then that gets abandoned very quickly. Um, but he's introduced to the sister. He walks up. He says, hey, sexy. I think I'm pretty sure. Hey, sexy. Uh, and they're like, oh, hi. And then that scene just ends, and we smash cut to 20 days later. Yep. Sure. Have a seat. And now Marcus is dating the daughter in the family, which I can never remember her name. I think it's like Nicole or something. I don't, they don't say her name very often. And there's this great moment. So this brother is like an unhinged, crazy person. Mark is a literal unhinged, like a uh, psychopath yes. in this film. Yes. Like he's in, like, like, like criminally this, insane. This guy's pastime is like huffing amphetamines or something like yeah. that. And, and beating and people half to death. People. Yeah. yeah. Truth. Truth. So what the Truth. fuck can you do? Wait, 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 wait. And literally, that's all he does in this film until the end, which we'll talk about. But he, uh, he, uh, there's this great scene where his sister and his mom are like talking in the bedroom, and she's talking about her, she's dating Marcus or whatever. And he walks into her room, and just walks in, and she goes, "Next time, knock." And he goes, "Shut up, bitch! I did knock. I did knock, you fucking bitch!" And I'm like, "Jesus!" From like zero Mark to has, eleven, Mark. Mark has like the. Best stilted one line yeah. throughout this entire film. Shut up, bitch. I did knock. And it's like, I did not hear you knock, no. but okay. He's literally just insane. Um, and then he 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 talks to Marcus and he's basically or or he tells her, like, uh, you better not fuck Marcus. You take care of my sister, you got it? You better not fuck her. Cause if you do, I'll break your fucking neck. Like, it also seems like he kind of wants to fuck his sister. He's very doesn't want any other dudes to fuck her. Now that's different because he, he does attempt to have sex with his mother. And that goes poorly later in the film. It's one of my favorite scenes in the movie. <laughs> as horrible and weird as it is. God, I needed that. Ooh, right there. Yeah. <sighs> Don't ever do that again. <laughs> But so Marcus and the sister are out on a date and they're and they go and and this is again how I don't know how old these people are supposed to be. They they get into the back of her his car and start making out. I'm like, are they like 14? He's like old as shit, like Honda Civic yeah, or something. Yeah, it's like, like how like that's not a thing college kids really do. You would just go to your apartment or go somewhere like you don't sit in the back of a car and make out, but the gang sees this yes. and they call Mark. Who brings a sledgehammer. So I thought it was a baseball bat, which at, would be bad enough. But at first, I thought it was a comical mallet. Oh <laughs> it really, he has a fucking sledgehammer. I, and I thought Mark was one step away from Gallagher at, at one point. Yeah, yeah, it's he really, he, I, he's, he's, he's an evil Gallagher in this film. Um... Oh, and also I gotta I gotta talk about when they call Mark, they just steal a phone from a random oh, yeah. guy. Yeah. And just punch him in the face and take his phone. <laughs> Fucking phone call, man. Yo, give me that full phone. <laughs> I need that. Hey, what's up? Oh, do we need that? I this movie, ah, it's so strange. It's such an interesting idea about how like the world works by this writer slash director that like gangs just hey, like hang out on the street. He's seen some shit, Brian. I can't tell if he has or and he's gonna come murder us, or if he has no idea what any of. Here's it. the thing: I think I think everything he has, everything he knows about this this little underworld, secondhand from people he does. Yeah, that's what it, kind of what it feels like, or something. It's yeah, because it's just like it's it's also stilted and strange. Yo, Mark, Mark, what's up, man? Guess who's here? <laughs> Oh yeah, your sister's uh, having sex with some dude, man. <laughs> oh, oh, sh oh, you're running way over. All right, all right, make that shit quick. 
And so he's, he shows up in like five seconds with a sledgehammer and beats the boyfriend half to death. Pulls him out of the car and just beats the shit out of him. Uh, and he's all bloody and stuff. And then <laughs> I love, um, we cut to their home and the parents, the parents in this movie are so weird. They're like, like 50 or whatever. Yeah. And they're constantly like making out like. Exactly. Yeah, these are like parents and like in their 40s or 50s and it cuts to them just in the living room straddling on the couch making out as their kids walk by and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Hey, where are you going? We can't park right now. Be careful. Uh, So she goes to the hospital. Uh, oh, oh, before she goes, the daughter goes to the hospital. The son walks in on him making out, and he has this great moment where yeah. he's, like, watching, and you can tell he gets mad. He reaches in his pocket, and I thought he was going to start, like, jerking off. But yes, he, yes. I, I, yes. That's what he thought was going to happen. But no, he pulls a, like, rock out of his pocket and throws it across the room. And they look up like, what was that? And then he walks away. And I'm like, wait, okay, I need what? to delve into this. What? So he's so jealous and upset at his dad making out with his mom because he wants to be making out with his mom. That his, his grand idea was to pull a rock out and throw it across the room like, like they're dogs. And he's like distracting them with a treat and they'll just stop making out. It's the weirdest. Oh, it's so strange. Uh, then we cut to Neil Breen hospital room. We get <laughs> yes, yes, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. yeah, we get a Neil Breen hospital room, just a white wall with a clipboard nailed to the wall and a fluorescent tube light stuck above the bed. <laughs> it's fucking glorious. Uh, and she has a very heartfelt scene with Marcus, who's uh, in a coma or whatever, um, who she's been dating for less than three weeks. <laughs> I want you to hate me. Please don't hate me. I want to have something special with you. <laughs> and she's like, I love you and I want to be with you. And this is the saddest thing that's ever happened. And I'm so sorry. And this whole scene is like five minutes long of her just fake crying and I'm like do you think her and the director thought they were nailing this because it, it is a it is rough it's my life it's pretty rough I hope you can hear me I know you can hear me moving right along day 43 <laughs> oh and this is great uh, this is the intimidating the team Scene. Yes. Okay. So <laughs> right now it's just been some dickery and yeah. even some and, well, and, and some felony assault. assault. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's go ahead and make it armed criminal action. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. What's going I said, on? get the fuck off. They pull out guns, they break into Mark's, and his gang, this is interesting, his gang is so ride or die for Mark, when Mark seems like a tool and that I don't know why they like him, but they literally, his whole gang helps him intimidate yes. his teacher into changing a grade with guns. I'm like, what yes. is going on? Now, I want you to change Mark's grades right now, okay? And if you mention any of this to the police, Yo, let's fucking just kill her right now, man. Y'all know she's gonna talk. And also, I gotta talk about this classroom because this ex this compounds my confusion about how old he's supposed to be. Because in the background of this classroom, uh, and I again, I assume it's college because she does mention a dean. But there is a a a world map, like a like an elementary school like world map that mm -hmm. you would use to like you know learn where the countries are and stuff. And then there's a whiteboard, and on the whiteboard is algebra. And I'm like, wait a second. What what possible? Wasn't their class like English? I don't, maybe. So I'm confident everybody has read the chapter on understanding structured writing. Is that correct? Uh, we both went to college. Did you ever have a math class that had 
a world map on the wall? Because I didn't. No, my foreign <laughs> language classes did. Right, which kind of makes sense, I guess, a little bit, because, uh, you know, foreign languages. But, like, I was like, why is there algebra and a map? This looks like an elementary school class. Okay. Then, this is where we get the title card that says 60 Days Later. And the parents are fucking. Literally, we get one scene. All this is, the parents are fucking in bed. The The son pretends to use a, holding a, the weirdest looking knife I've ever seen. It looks almost like an icing spreader for like icing yeah. cakes or something. And he like, he fake Jimmy's the door open with it. And then stands there staring at his parents having sex and then walks away and the scene ends. Wait, I hear something, wait. <laughs> Yep. Slut. What did you call her? And, and oh, he also calls his sister a slut. Randomly, because he always has to do that in every scene. Yeah, yeah. He, it, um, like, every scene, his character is like, you have to be a dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then so we can redeem you. So you get that great redemption arc. Oh, God. <laughs> At the end of this movie? I don't even know, man. No, I do mind. I'm not going to sit here and listen to you call my daughter a slut. So right after this, they're all talking about school. Like the parents and the, and the mm -hmm. sister and the brother are all sitting there talking about school. Want to see your grades? No, no, not your grades. Your grade. Besides, your sister showed us her grade from school. Where's yours? I got an A too. Gr grade? Only in one class? I don't know. That's what I was going to say. Like, she says grade singular. She goes, your, he, the dad goes, your sister showed us her grade from school. I was like, yeah, you know, that grade you get when you're in college, your singular grade. And then the sister's like, he's like, oh, I got an A. I got an A. I got an A too. A liar, you had an F. Oh, no, okay, this scene, there's so much to unpack here. Because the dad says, on top of that, he goes, so we, by the way, we heard about uh, you beating up people and threatening your teacher. No, you better watch out. And what's all this I hear about beating up your sister's date, slapping your sister around, and threatening your teacher? And I'm like, wait, you heard about those two obvious felonies? Yes. <laughs> you heard about that? <laughs> like, how did you find out about that? Also, I, also, just just change it yourself. Just a vertical line changes an F to an A. That's what I learned go. in school. That's Kyle knows how to cheat. And then I love this. He goes, he he goes and he gets the grades that she changed. And he hands it to his parents. An A? <laughs> Not bad. And I'm like, you literally just said you heard about him threatening his teacher. Thus, you know his grade is bullshit. Like, what is happening? It's so fucking weird. That's great. I don't believe it. I saw him tear up his paper for getting an F. Uh, oh, and then this is where we set up my favorite conflict of the film. Uh, and it was the reason I decided to watch this when I was skipping through. Uh, the dad says, okay, here's what the, we're going to do. Match? Yes. Uh, here's yes. what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do because you're such a fuck up and you're so violent and awful. Me and you, son and father, we're going to lock ourselves in a storage locker. <laughs> And have a battle of brawn, and the last one standing gets to stay here. The loser has to move out. I'll make you a deal. We get locked in a storage room and we fight it out like men. I lose, I pack my bags and leave and never see again. You lose, I don't ever want to see you again. Deal. <laughs> but Brian, where would he ever learn such behavior? <laughs> Flashback to he learned this because his father locked himself. No, had his mom lock him and his dad in a closet. One day he locked us in a closet, told my mom to throw away the key. She wasn't allowed to let either of us out until we were almost standing. Which very clearly in the flashback is a shed yes. and not a closet. Yes. Uh, and they have a fist fight and we skip to see this. And I love the dad in that grabs him and like chokes him out. And he's like, sleep, sleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get, rat. That's right. Go to sleep. Oh, it's so good. 
Uh, and I love the sister goes, I just hope we're making the right decision here. And they're like, of course we are. I just hope we're making the right decision. Of course we are. Uh, Mark tells his friends, he's like, guess what, guys? I got to fight my dad. <laughs> hey, guys, guess what? What's up? What? I got to fight my dad. <laughs> <laughs> and I love this, too, about this apartment. They all take their shoes off before they go yes. inside. <laughs> yes. That that's what I was thinking. Why this? Uh, why trigger the director? Yeah. He knew like a real estate agent. Oh yeah, yeah. And so that like this was a place that was set up. And, oh like, right. They had just finished like shampooing the carpet. Yeah, and they're like, you can't wear your shoes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we just got the carpets clean. Somebody's coming to look at it in three hours. You have two hours to shoot. Do not get any dirt on the floor. <laughs> Wait, you want us to beat up your dad? No, I gotta fight my dad. And whoever loses. Is kicked out of the house. Uh, and then it cuts to day 65, and the title card for this is Day 65, Time for the Dad and Son Battle. Thank you. Thank you, movie. <laughs> I love it so much. All these title cards in Papyrus, by the way. Um, and I love the, sis the mom runs into the sister's room and goes, Hurry up, honey. It's time for the fight. Come on. Come on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Come on, we gotta get front row seats for the dad son fight. Day 65, we're gonna get us a fight night. <laughs> oh, that'd be great if an announcer walked into the backyard and a, in a, in a, in a, uh, a microphone dropped down from the, the sky out of nowhere and he's like, let's get ready to. <laughs> in this corner, we have a gambling alcoholic father. <laughs> and in the other corner, we got a multi felony son. Incestuous son. Let's go! <laughs> And then, so the son loses uh, very quickly. Yes. The dad throws a really off-target punch that I, doesn't I, hit him. I, I think they went. We're like, this is this is looking bad. Can we just end this yeah. as soon as possible? Yeah. They're like, oh, this doesn't look as good as we thought it would, because the, the punch that knocks the son out is literally like here, like it, like you can clearly see it fly past him, and they're like, he's like, oh, I'm unconscious. They throw water on him, he wakes up, and he goes to hang out with his buddies. He's like, I gotta live here now. You lost the fight? No. <laughs> it's not funny. Yo, 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 cheer up, I got you, I told you. you can stay here with me. One of my favorite recurring lines in this movie is that when he gets to the gang thing, whenever he's hanging out with the gangs, they always say, one of the guys will be like, point to one of the other guys. Like when Mark walks in, he goes, let's get this guy some drinks. Yo, hey, make us some drinks, man. Yeah. They say that yes. so many yes. times. Not a drink. Not a singular drink. Let's get this guy some drinks. Hey, talk at. Make this guy some drinks. Yo, make my man some drinks. I don't know about Trigger. We need some drinks. Yeah, I got it. I just love making drinks. Bring him back some drinks. And every single time they're like, they, they point to the guy to, to make drinks. Yeah. It's one guy. It's the same guy it's every same time. Guy it's every a time. recurring joke. It's he, like a. He basically brings them. <laughs> yeah, they, literally the drinks in this movie are strawberry Kool-Aid. They all, I, 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 I'm pretty sure they're drinking strawberry Kool-Aid. I mean, maybe it's supposed to be like vodka cranberry or something, but it, it always just looks like strawberry Kool-Aid. You thirsty? Oh yeah. This is where, yeah, oh, this where is where it goes off, go deep end. off the rails, off the rails quickly, completely. And we're not going to get it too much into it because it's horrifying. But, and then, uh, so they see Marcus at the club with, the sister again mm -hmm. and this is a little thing it's not super important but he sees it and i love this line the brother goes is that the asshole from the other night my sister's here with that asshole from the other night and i was like the one you like knocked unconscious like two months ago that was like two oh, yeah, months yeah. he says the other night and i'm like that was night. like literally like th six weeks ago yeah, yeah exactly exactly <laughs> also also i'm pretty sure you would remember somebody that you've cried like basically caved their skull beat to death with a sledgehammer almost yeah and, but now i love the guys just like fine recovered he's okay uh but the, the brother comes up and they fucking they, he like they don't fuck yeah <laughs> That would be a whole different movie. Um, but he, they, they, like, argue and stuff, and there's, like, a... They push and shove, and it turns out... Um, and Marcus decides, look, I can't do this anymore. They're in a parking garage. He's like, I can't stay with you anymore. And he has one of my favorite lines. He talks about how when he was in the hospital, yeah, his, his mother had mother to pay for it. And he goes, my mother made it clear, if I get hurt again, I am on my own, even if I am bleeding to death. <laughs> She's made it very clear, if I get hurt again, I'm on my own. Even if I am bleeding to death. <laughs> it's just such a great 
great one. Uh, the dialogue. Yes. Here's the thing. A lot of the actors in this movie do a pretty good job. Most of the actors do a pretty okay job. Yeah. The dialogue is just garbage. Oh, so bad. It's all so stilted and terrible. But, like, you can tell the actors and actresses are, like, laying into it and trying to do what they can with it. And they're also getting no help from the editing because most of it is just, like, locked down close-ups. Argus, please don't do this to me. Come on. I'm sorry. And then, uh, so they, they go, we go back in the club. Uh, they're all like trying to talk over really loud music that I think is actually playing within the world. It's on. It's on, boys. because we can't hear our characters. Yes. Normally when you would do yes. this, you would be in the club, you wouldn't have music on so you could record clean audio, and then you would add the music in in post, right? I'm pretty sure based on how this sounds mm -hmm. that they actually had music playing and our characters are yelling over it and you cannot hear them like the whole time. Yo. Yeah. We'll grab that sexy bitch over there. Oh, yeah. Help. I'm on it. I'm on it. Cast the center of my out. Oh, wait. Come back. But they do have a great line. Where the waitress goes, you wanted to see me, and the guy, one of the guys goes, uh, the uh, the other like Tim, Tim or something like that. I think, I think it's, it's the white guy, the curly haired Star. white guy. Discount Ju uh, Justin Timberlake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he goes. He says to the waitress, "I wanted to drink that ass." You wanted to see me. By the way, what would you guys like to drink? I like to drink your ass. And I love that Mark, the fucking psychopath, turns to him and goes, what does that even mean? <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> Very funny. You guys when you have Mark <laughs> questioning your, yeah. li your, your lines of dialogue yeah, here, yeah. that says something. That says something because Mark has some choice dialogue in this film. You better not fuck her. Because if you do, I'll break your fucking neck. And this felt very much like a moment where the actor in the moment was like, I gotta say something. What the fuck does that even what? mean? <laughs> I like to drink your ass. Oh, what does that even mean? <laughs> and then, so this, we got, we're gonna touch on it briefly because it is important side plot. This is where Trigger goes back to his, to the, the guest house yes. with a beautiful lady. She drugs him. Yes. Uh, with, <laughs> with something, some, some pills drug. and strawberry Kool-Aid. Handcuff, handcuff and blindfold. Him. Will you just relax? And blindfolds him and leaves. And then a giant man walks mm -hmm. in and it goes exactly where you think it goes. Mm -hmm. And we'll leave it at that. Uh, and then, because just so it goes where you think it goes, and then we'll, we'll remember this for later, okay? We'll put a pin in that. No, uh, no, we're going to save this for, we're, we're going to talk about the scene that happened directly after this. After the assault. Oh, yeah. Where a tw 12 or 10 year old kid. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. What the? What was that? What was this? Some, a 12 year old kid, and he explains that he is 12 year old. He says it to the camera. Yes. I, I don't know what's going on. I'm, I'm only 12 years old. Yes. Uh, runs into the room while Trigger is crying, and it's crying, awful. It's, handcuffed. Oh, my naked, God. And still blindfolded. It is horrifying. Like, again, this, I was like, I'm, I. Who like it is awful to watch in a way that it's very effective. Like yes. in a way that is very effective as like this should this is a horrifying thing and I am horrified. Movie, you succeeded in this regard. Like it's terrifying and, and just terrible. But this kid runs in and it's like, I'm 12. That lady over there paid me ten dollars to untie you. And then What? Uh, a lady across the street paid me ten dollars to to untie you. And we move right along, and I, I, it's it's probably the best part of the movie in the sense that it is effective at like making you feel awful and like just, ugh, I don't like this. You know, we haven't seen or heard from Trigger since night of that party. Yeah. Oh, okay, so then we cut back to the apartment with the gang, and they're like, we haven't seen Trigger in a while. And they tell uh, cut rate Justin Timberlake, why don't you call him? Yeah, I tried calling him, but I got nothing. With what? <laughs> Your shit's been turned off forever now. I don't get it. You got money, but you can't turn on your phone. And he goes, my phone's off. I can't call him. And then, th this is some of the most mind-blowing filmmaking I've ever seen. He's like, they're like, go turn your phone on. He goes, okay, walks in the other room with somebody else's phone. Yes. Calls the phone company. We cut away to a woman. Yes. Yes. Why? 
Yes, hello, I'd like to pay for my phone bill. Oh, thank you for calling EJ Phone Services. Can you please hold, sir? I just called. You're gonna place me on hold already? Uh, it'll be just a second, sir. <sighs> Why? Why? Working for the phone company, smoking a cigarette. You don't need to do this. It, and I thought it was gonna come back. It does not come back. I thought this, surely this must mean something. We cut away to see the phone operator at the phone company going, Oh, hello. Uh, you want to reconnect your phone? I got to put you on hold. And he goes, okay. And then it cuts. That's all we see of her. It'll be just a second, sir. Uh, all right, well, hurry up. <laughs> you don't even know. All right, all right. My phone should be turned on in a couple hours. It cuts back to in the apartment. This is infuriating because all you have to do is give a single line of dialogue and maybe even a riff on the guy because he's too lazy to pay right. his phone bill. Right, right. Uh, why do we watch him make the call and then go and see the person that answers the phone at the... I was blown away by this scene. <laughs> and then he walks back in and I thought, okay. And he walks back in and goes, all right, my phone's back on. And I'm like, so, all right. So I thought surely this actress is going to be important. No. Like I was like, maybe she's going to come back somehow. She's going to show up at the end of the movie. And I don't even... But nope. This had to be a friend of the director who wanted to be in his movie. And he's like, shit, I already shot everything. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, you can be the person he calls on the phone. We'll show you. We'll, we'll, we'll pan the camera up your body while you're smoking a cigarette. And then we'll never see you again. I, it's mind blowing. It's so insane. It's mind blowing. I guess the mystery man showed up. Uh oh, Trigger Man. Trig. Oh, man. He's alive. What up, what up boy? Oh, and then, so Trigger shows up, and this is very interesting. We get a flashback to the scene from, like, five yeah, minutes ago in yeah, the movie, but now but it, it's a they, dramatic... They asked him, hey, what happened? how'd that go? And he was like... And he goes, oh, oh it was boy. great. Yo, what happened, man? You, you hit that shit? <laughs> Let him finish his story. <laughs> so, um, as we uh, walked in... I banged two chicks, and then we get to watch him bang two chicks. <laughs> you guys having a party? Without me? You wanna join? You're in for the treats. Now it's an interesting idea of like his sort of uh, his, his dealing with the trauma of the thing and like sort of replacing the memory. There's some interesting ideas in this film. At Pretty wild story you got there. It's cause my boy's got game, lots of it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so you, uh, you, you fuck both girls, huh? And there's some interesting ideas in here about, like, dudes not being able to talk to each other about shit, but, like, it's a subplot that gets abandoned completely and then made a joke of later in the movie, so I don't even know what to do with that until, and then people get murdered. But, um, now it's the 111th day, and, uh... Randomly now, Justin Timberlake is fucking some random blonde woman who, maybe it's the phone, was that the phone lady? Maybe. Was that the phone lady? Maybe, Maybe she did come back because she is blonde. I gotta check this. I'll look at. Well, you're about to find out right along with this me while I'm editing. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I told your boss about you, Natalie. <laughs> uh, and we literally watch him fuck this woman for three minutes. Yes. And then it cuts to the next title card and says 161st day. Why was the point? Why was that in the movie? Justin Taylor like came up to the came up to trigger. He's like, "Hey, I need a sex. Scene. I need a sex scene. I need a sex scene. Can I have a sex scene?" And he's like, "Well, it doesn't really fit anywhere." He's like, "Just one of those jumps in time. Just cut into yeah, me fucking." Yeah. All right. <laughs> I think you should call me Mrs. Mrs. Natalie, and I'll call you Mr. Dickerson. Don't ever do that again. <laughs> Son starts talking to his mom again. It's been you know like a few months, and he's he's sort of less crazy he's still just as crazy but he starts talking to his mom again he's like look i i don't want to move back home but i do want to see you mom i i hate the thought of being away especially from you if you know what i'm saying i want to see you so what do you want uh just a coffee it's fine all right have a seat i'll be back she basically he's like i'm a changed man mom and she goes i i know but i'm a changed man And I'm like, how could you know? 
And also, he's not. <laughs> no. no, if anything, he's worse. Yes, he is worse now, honestly. Uh, and then she's like, and I have to leave now. And the scene ends. It's like a four, okay. four second scene. It's so strange. Well, I've got to go now. You good? I'm always good. <laughs> but we are immediately met with this same scene. But instead of Mark, we get Marcus. Marcus in the coffee shop with a different lady. And now this subplot is my maybe my favorite in the film because it's it goes nowhere. It means nothing. And it's literally just in it so that the director could film two women kissing. I guarantee that is why this is in this movie. Um, so then we we cut to the 180th day and Marcus is in a coffee shop hitting on some random woman uh, awkwardly. I'm Marcus, by the way. What's yours? Shh. I'm studying. Uh, and she's like, no, go away. And then that scene ends, uh, which they don't leave it on the note of like, they're gonna date, but they are apparently. Yeah. How about you let me make it up to you? <laughs> In your fucking dreams. Uh, then we cut to, and we gotta talk about this because this, this, they're, they're doing magic tricks in their apartment. Literally, I think they're supposed to be playing poker, but the guy's like doing magic tricks for them. This is what we're gonna do. You're gonna pick a card, all right? And mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you what you pick. Mm -hmm. Cool? Okay. All right. One of the guy, one of the gang members is doing magic tricks for them, and one of the guys is wearing sunglasses oh, inside. I, 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 say, that, say, say that statement again, but like even more serious. One of the gang members. One of the gang members is doing magic tricks for the other <laughs> gang member. <laughs> It, I, that is what's happening in this fucking movie. And in the other room behind them, Trig is crying. It's oh, yes. horrifying. Yes. I can't, man. Oh, this man. fucking movie. And then Trig runs into the other room and there's this Heart, this scene, I, I, it goes on so long and is so uh, just awful. It, it's like the, the scene in, in High Kicks where she's in the bathroom crying in the mirror. I'm just like, and it is effective filmmaking because I feel awful watching this. And then, and, and fucking Mark walks in and he's like, look, I got to tell you what actually happened that night. Trig explains what happened. Uh, and that he was sexually assaulted, mm -hmm. and, tr and and Mark's and like Mark, like very understanding. Understanding. I understand. I want to help. And then he leaves, and like a good friend, he completely rips on oh him in front of all the God. guys. It's insanity. It's insanity. Because I was like, wow, this is actually interesting character development and an interesting character moment where Mark is talking to Trigg and is like, wow, that's really hard, man. I, I'm here for you. And Trigg's like, please don't tell anybody else. You can't tell a single soul, okay? Yeah, I hear you, man. And Mark immediately <laughs> walks into the other room and in the most awful way possible. And you you would you would think it's, re, it's it would be redeemable where he's like, we gotta go find this guy. Yeah, or something. And, and his, no, 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 no. Well, <laughs> you guys are gonna believe this shit. <laughs> The night of the party, Trigger got butt fucked by a dude. He goes and immediately just fucking rips on him about like the most traumatic experience in this guy's life <laughs> and just like fucking shits all over him. And I'm like, what are we doing, movie? What is happening? I thought you were actually doing something interesting and then you just undercut it and I don't, I don't understand, man. And, but it still could be an interesting commentary, but it's not. It's it's really not. It's 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 really not. Hey, yo! Hey, both of you the fuck down right now. Relax. And then we hard cut to Marcus walking up to two chicks making out. So check out these two babes over here. On, under a under a, a park light and it, it, it turns out to be current lady and previous lady so it's the sister of mark which I, again i can never remember her name they only no. say it like twice um and then uh the lady from the coffee shop that marcus was hitting on they're making out. this is the weirdest like coincidence hijinks nonsense that happens in this moment they're making out and Marcus walks up and he's like, hey, I thought we had a date with the new girl. And he's like, holy shit, it's my old girlfriend, who, which apparently they, they just broke up because of the whole Mark thing. What are you doing here? He's my date. He's the guy that I spoke about. What? Oh my God, I thought it was a different Marcus. 
He's my ex for crying out loud. Why are you guys making out? I didn't know you like women. And they're like, well, we do, both of us. And he's like, okay. And she goes, and I love this moment. Since you two, why don't we have a threesome? The one girl, the new coffee shop girl goes, we should have a threesome. And then the, the sister goes, that might work, except I just started seeing your brother, Marcus. That might work, except that I just started seeing your brother. Who, mine? So. What? What? And then she continues making out with the girl. So are we having the threesome Hell or no. not? <laughs> So the sister is dating Marcus's brother. So she can't have a threesome with this girl and Marcus, but she can just make out with this girl. Cause I guess that doesn't count or something. I it's, and I was like, why is this scene in the movie? It literally adds zero to the fucking plot. I literally think this had to be in the film just because they were like, we need a scene where there's two chicks make out. So I can like put that in the trailer or something to like get attention. It's, what? And then we find out the dad owes a little person money. Where's my money? I still don't have it. <laughs> I you know you know what I nicknamed that guy? No. Mr. Big. Mr. Big? Oh, is that I, I, a good nickname? I, I'm just gonna give him the nickname Mr. Big. That's a good nickname for like a, a little person crime boss. That's a that's a solid it's like calling, you know, the big buff dude like the muscle tiny. tiny. Yeah, yeah, that's the same. Great idea. Um uh, so the dad owes this guy, this crime boss, like forty thousand yeah. dollars. And I love this scene. The son just appears there magically. Come on. And give him the VIP treatment. Dad. What the hell are you doing here? And he's like, hey, where are you taking my dad? And he's like, he owes me $40,000. We're going to break his kneecaps or whatever. And the son's like, I'll cover it. I'll take care of it. Take care of it? What do you mean, take care of it? I'll cover. He, he, he explains. He says, I got to talk about this. He says, you'll take 20000 from my cut of this job or whatever that they just did. Some yeah. unseen job. And I'll pay you the other 20000 in the future. You can subtract my 20000 share. The other 20, I'll work it off. And the dad turns around and goes to the son. Are you nuts? Where'd you get that kind of money? He literally just said 20,000 from the job we just did. Yes. And 20,000 in the future. That is, what, what is your question? Also, look at the place you are, my man. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Realize these, these are not people of, of, you know, good stature. Mm. Especially, you know, these when are it comes to, these are criminals. This is a criminal, probably drug organization. When it comes to what, laundry. Kyle? Say it. I have no clue. Oh, I thought you were saying like good not stature. people of good stature. Especially <laughs> with... societal stature, not. I was like, Jesus Christ. Not... <laughs> that was the best unintended joke I think you've ever fucking made on this show. I thought you were going to go there, and I was ready for it. Holy <laughs> shit. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and then, so he's going to pay for his dad, and then we cut forward to the 222nd day mark's moving back home and the sister's furious the dad <laughs> the dad decides it was really good i thought you i was like that was clever the way you weave that Unintentional in there joke. Yeah, it was pretty solid though mark's moving back home the sister's furious about it and i'm like you're like 40 just move out <laughs> move out yes. of your fucking parents house uh and then mark comes back home And he immediately raised his terror on the place. Yes, and they like don't immediately kick him back out. <laughs> like, what the fuck is happening? Uh, and the parents are just wait. These parents are just way too horny for each other for like forty-five year old people. Every scene, it's disgusting, and I can't. This movie made me feel like I need a shower. I was like, I just, I just want to boil this movie out of my brain. And then I love this. So the brother walks up to the sister's door and he knocks and he's like, Hey, can we talk? We gotta talk. And she, she doesn't say anything, doesn't answer. And he walks away and then she comes to the door and opens it and she's standing there and there's no music or anything. I'm like, are they going to do a fucking jump scare? Gotcha. 
Yes. Yes, they are going to do a fucking jump scare. The brother rah, runs into the room and just starts assaulting her immediately. Fucking immediately upon being home. And I'm like, great. I don't, who is our protagonist in this film? Is it Mark? Because he's literally the worst person. And we haven't even got to the worst things that he does. It's, is it the sister? Because she's barely in the movie. No. Is it the dad or the mom? Because they're barely in the movie. Is it Trigger? Because he's barely in the movie. I, I, I think it's Tim, Tim Starr's cell phone. What? Because why not? <laughs> okay. Because why not? Yes, I agree. <laughs> it's Tim Starr's cell phone. Um, it does go through the biggest character arc by being <laughs> yeah, off and then turned back on. <laughs> uh, and then so the next title card says 200, 240 days has, has gone by. <laughs> 240 days has gone by. So the dad's sober and somebody has just left a beer. Put this shit here. Next to which, his which laptop. Which I think is like a Bud Light Lime or something or, or like that. It looks like a wine cooler or something. Yes. Yeah. Um, so he's sitting there. He's like, oh, I got to use my computer. Oh, what's this? An unopened beer. One drink could it hurt. <laughs> I guess one little sip will hurt. You cut back to a flashback yeah, of, him of him being an alcoholic. An alcoholic, yeah. Just like, Ugh. And, and then he just starts drinking. He starts chugging. And then he finishes that beer. And the amazing thing is, he's like, he has no idea where that beer came from, but he can but find he other ones. more beer. <laughs> It, it cuts to, and he has, from what we see, he has three empty bottles next to his computer, and he is trashed out of his like, goddamn on, mind. Man. I can't explain. The liquor found me. Three beers, and they're not even beers, they're like wine coolers. They're literally like fucking wine coolers. They're, and like, he's like, nine, they're like, what, 5% alcohol? Yeah, like at that? most. Yeah, at most. And he's like, what's up? And I'm like, come okay. I work on my computer. Yeah. All right. Great. Um, and then prostitutes show up. Yep. And I did not realize at first that what was going on here. Mark has purchased prostitutes to put give to his dad because he and he also set up the beer by his dad so that his dad would get drunk and then be and have these prostitutes hanging all over him. And then the mom walks in and it's like, what the hell? Mm -hmm. And then she'll leave him. Mm -hmm. She kicks him out. And that's what happens. She kicks him out for drinking uh, and having prostitutes around. I want you out of here by morning. I am through with you. I can't explain. The liquor found me. <laughs> the liquor found me. That's a great line. The liquor found that's me. That's a great line. It is. It, it reminded me of Jim Leahy from Trailer Park Boys. The liquor, the liquor found me, Randy. <laughs> Uh, so now the dad's out of the picture. He can finally try to fuck his mom. Yes. And this scene is my favorite scene in the entire movie. It is insane. It's glorious. This movie, uh, this scene is incredible. So he's his mom's laying on the couch, stressed out about kicking out her dad, his dad, you know, her husband. And it, the son walks up behind and starts massaging her. It's massaging her shoulders, you know, because she's tense. She's stressed. <laughs> Ooh, hectic, stressful, full. Oh, that's great. Thank you. God, I needed that. Ooh, right there. Yeah. And my, and you can see where this is going already because we know he wants to fuck his mom. Uh, he's massaging her shoulders, and then his hands start moving down to her arms. And then my favorite thing about this scene, and it's what makes it hilarious and not just gross, is he has this moment where he's rubbing her arms, and then his hands move up and shake <laughs> <laughs> they do like a nervous oh, jitter like he's boy. got like like he's got like, he's got like a, uh, uh, and then he just grabs her boobs <laughs> it's like something out of a fucking cartoon yes, it's yes. amazing and she's like what the hell and i'm like have you not noticed that your son wants to fuck you it's been very apparent to everybody else what are you doing i was massaging you on my freaking tits. And then uh, 
that scene just ends. She's like, get out or whatever. And then we cut to the apartment and I got to talk real quick about the drink making guy because they make, they say, go make drinks. And then it hard cuts and he's still making drinks like five minutes later. And he's in the background. Of Maybe the they're shop. very complicated, Brian. Did you ever think about that? Yeah. Mixing Have you ever seen Cocktail with Tom Cruise? <laughs> maybe he's making one of those. Yeah, maybe. I'm pretty sure he's just mixing strawberry Kool-Aid with vodka, but... Sure. Uh, but while he's making the drinks, you can see him in the background. He's like having a seizure by the sink. What are you going to today? Uh, I'm going to Kelly's. Kelly's? Kelly's, yeah. Oh, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if they didn't give him screen direction. Shake, but he's in the back. Shake, shaking nuts. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe he's shaking a cocktail thing, but he's like. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're trying to get that, huh? Yeah. Oh, you ain't trying to. Hey, you got a girl now. So I'm not worried about that. She's not gonna be this like is I was hoping Katie called this. I was hoping Trigger was gonna kill Mark. I was hoping that was yes. how this movie was gonna yes. end. Is that Trigger's like, I've had enough of your bullshit. Also, you're a fucking crazy person. Fucking murder. I, I had another thing that I, I kinda kinda wish would yeah. happen, but it didn't. I'll, I'll reveal okay, that one. We'll get there. Oh, okay. So then he talks to uh uh Mark talks to the two other gang members and he goes, I need you to do something for me. Okay. Here's what's going on. I need a huge favor from both of you tonight before the party. So you so, just try to pass at your mom. Try to what pass is, at your mom. What what is what is the next step in uh, the, after that failed? Convince two of your friends to violently rape her. I'm done with this film. I'm fucking done with this movie. Um, it's legitimately a horrifying scene. It's incredibly well acted in like a horrifying terrible way uh i do not recommend watching it it is awful um but literally they show up with guns and yeah that happens and the son watches yeah this yeah, dude's a what? fucking psychopath he's a fucking psychopath he's absolutely the villain of the movie except he isn't i don't it's so strange let's get the fuck out of here well we can't just leave her there lying on the kitchen floor then they show up at a party. They show up at a party. Uh, and who is there? Who is there? Uh, the girl and the the big buff dude that assaulted Trigger earlier in the film. Um, they are there. And my the, the wildest thing about this scene is that Trigger sees her walk into the party and he's like, hey guys, that's her. That's the girl that drugged me. It's her. Oh, who, 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 who. Her. And they're like, oh, and they all jump and grab her. And they're like yelling at him. She's also after another one of the... She's, she's after, yeah. Targeting another one of the yeah. members. Another one of the gang members. And they grab her and they're yelling at her. And this whole time, the guy who did it is just standing in the background. Yeah. He doesn't leave. He doesn't run away. He doesn't do it. He just stands there yeah. and watches yep. like, all right. And then eventually, I guess he slowly walks away because she's like, it was a guy. I did it for this guy. And they're like, there he is. I'm like, how did you... What? He's fucking here. He's fucking here. <laughs> He's right there, right there, go get him. Go get his ass. All right, and he's like four feet away in the also, other room. Also, he is a giant man, oh, and I am surprised huge. that he is able to be a restrained one yeah. person. He is a fucking gigantic, he's like eight feet tall and just muscle. He's huge. And uh, so then, literally, uh, what happens is Mark, the psychopath that he is, uh, now this being, you know, it, it is what it is, he fucking shoots them. He pulls out a gun and murders both of them. Headshot. Headshots, <laughs> both <laughs> of them. Some great prosthetic oh! bullet wound headshot. Oh, it cuts to their bodies laying on the <laughs> ground and the girl is on top with a bullet wound in her forehead, breathing like all oh, get out. Just <laughs> The shot is on her for two seconds. She couldn't hold her breath for two goddamn seconds. Oh my god. And then Mark shows up back at home, threatens to kill his mom and his sister, and I love this line. His mom says, I hate you, demon child. <laughs> Yes! Yes! Which he is. He has a demon child and you should hate him. I hate you, demon child! And then dad gets a gun in a car. And, and I thought, I thought he was gonna go kill Mark. Like, that I, would make sense. I was thinking that, or he was gonna go Michael Douglas and falling down and just go on like a killing spree. Or something. No. Just kills himself. Cool. Great, 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 great. And then Mark walks out of his house, 
and stumbles across There's a blind homeless a man. A beautiful scene here. Oh, oh my god. god. I knew you'd do that. How'd you know? You're supposed to be blind. I am blind. But I have other gifts. This, uh, uh, so we have just spent about an hour and 20 minutes. Yes. Making him the greatest heel of all time. The greatest villain of all time. I mean, this is this is greater than Jamie Lannister's heel turn face turn in yes. this movie. It's honestly worse than that because let's recount his crimes. Uh, Mark's crimes. He has beaten a man within an inch of his life. He has uh, threatened his teacher with a firearm, uh, com committing like blackmail, basically, mm -hmm. and, and 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 again threatening her with a firearm. So what the fuck can you do? Wait, 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 let me think. Let me think. Um, he has uh, uh, beat up Mark again, not as bad, but in a club once. <laughs> he has uh, 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 paid two or convinced two guys to sexually assault his mother while he watched. Mm -hmm. He has murdered two people. Extra judicious, judiciously, regardless of whether or not you think he should have, it's still extra judiciously just murders two people at a party. You can argue the prostitute thing too, just to throw that on top of crimes. Ladies, right on time. Come on in. All right. <laughs> Hi. Hello, hello. Oh yeah, he does hire two prostitutes. Sure, prostitute. I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, but it is at least illegal. Sure, um, and then uh, uh, yeah, and then and then has threatened to kill his mom and dad, or his his uh, his mom and sister. <laughs> right and is responsible for his dad killing himself. And, essentially, and and you forgot the kidnapping part because he forced them into like whatever that storage shed was oh, yeah, until yeah. he could figure things out. I'm gonna lock you both in the storage so I have time to pack my things and leave. Yeah, he absolutely kidnaps them, essentially, at gunpoint, yes. So that's 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 the rundown of everything Mark has done in this film. Uh, he comes, comes across a magic blind homeless man who's like, you're gonna walk around the corner, death is gonna be there, and if you don't ask for forgiveness, you're gonna die. Spoiler, this is a Christian movie all of a sudden, it's- If you do not believe, he will kill you. But- if you believe, you will be spared. It's insanity. Um, he runs around the corner, it crossfades to him running around the corner, a random person with a gun runs up. I must believe, I must believe. And is like, I'm gonna kill you. And he's like, no, please don't kill me. And then stands and then, up and, then, and the guy's gone. Yeah, and then, yo, and we have a, like, is it, is it a zoom in where he's just like on the ground yeah. constantly begging for forgiveness? It's yeah. Like, mm. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for everything I've done. <laughs> Please. I believe. Uh, and then it's we get a title card three weeks later. That's we gotta quick, stop. That was a quick reform. Um, so then we cut three weeks later, 311th day, Mark's in a coffee shop, and I swear to God, they tried they tried to turn Mark into the good guy at the end of this movie. It's, uh, it's insanity. Insane. Um, it's... He's reading the Bible in a coffee shop, and this woman yes. walks up to him, and it's like, oh, hello there. Who are you? And he's like, I'm Mark. What are you doing? I'm reading the Bible. I'm Erica. I'm Mark. Nice to meet you. You read the Bible? The Bible. Yes. Which part? Which part? John, John three sixteen, the most known verse. The only in the verse in James. I read it too. What book and chapter are you reading? John three sixteen. It's a great verse. Yeah, it's my favorite. You don't even have to know anything about the Bible. You just have to like wrestling to God know that goddamn quote. And I was like, oh, are we are we doing the? He's fine now. Okay, cool, great. We should go to church together sometime. I'd love that. I want to swap info. Uh, then we cut to 54 days later, and Mark is with that woman in a hotel room or their apartment, and they are engaged and have a child. Now, it's her child from a previous relationship. I was like, wow, they don't know how pregnancy works. But, <laughs> yeah, but no, it's her child from a previous relationship. 
can't wait to get back to North Hollywood and see my old buddies. Uh, and she's like, he's like, man, I wish I could go home ever. And she's like, why can't he? She goes, yeah, you're a changed man. You should be able to go home. I'm like, no! It's been three weeks since he had his mom. Violently, what? Are you gonna go see your mom and sis? No, I hate my guts. You should go, you're a changed man. They don't know that. So, also, what? I'm pretty sure he has multiple warrants out for his arrest. Absolutely! He murdered people and had me. He is the worst person in any movie we've ever watched. <laughs> And we've watched movies with Neil Breen in them. <laughs> I, I, it's insanity. I'm just too ashamed to show myself there. That's too bad. Maybe someday they'll come around. I hope so. Say it again. <laughs> I should I should right now. I love, to, so he brings her home. He does go home though. He's like, yeah, I'm going home. It's gonna, we're gonna meet up with my friends. He goes and meets up with his friends and they're like, you know, still do live in the gang life or whatever. And I love there's this little moment where they, she walks, the, the new girlfriend walks in and they're like all high-fiving and they high-five over her head and catch her hair in it. And she's like, ow, ow. <laughs> How you doing, man? Have a seat, have a seat, have a seat. How you doing? Have a seat, have a seat, have a seat. It's so weird. There's also another part where the the guy, the, like you could tell, like they they wanted them there and they needed the kid there, yeah. But they couldn't have the kid like in the to scene, act yeah. in the scene. So it was like, I'll take him into the other room. Yeah, yeah. One of the guy, one of the friends takes him, just carries the kid off camera into the other room. It's like that way we don't have to deal with this kid being on on camera. Everyone, I'd like you to meet my fiance, Erica. Erica. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So Mark found the Lord. He doesn't drink. He doesn't do drugs. He doesn't smoke anymore. And they're like, wow, that's crazy. I'm not soft. I just don't smoke anymore. Wait, wait, wait. What you mean you don't smoke no more? I'm different now. Damn, that's just too bad. But you still do drugs, right? No, I don't do drugs either. And then, uh, so then they're like, okay, well, we're not going to stay here while we're in town. We're going to stay at a hotel room or whatever. <laughs> you became a boring ass man. <laughs> no, he found the Lord. Mark's a very changed man. And so they go to the hotel room with the kid. And meanwhile, we cut back to the mom and the daughter and they're like, we got to do something about Mark. He's in town. Mom, please calm down. What's going on? Mark is in town. What? So they call their private <laughs> eye? Uh, yes, who we don't know. Look, I gotta call my friend. Um, we can't uh, have those detectives involved. We'll just handle it ourselves. No, never met her, don't know who she is, just a private eye or something. Who shows up and they're like, Mark's coming into town. Uh, we can't call the cops for reasons that are never really obvious. And she's like, gets a computer and within, I guess like five Google searches or something like hacks that, just figures his, out where he's at. Where he's at. She like hacks into the mainframe and figures out that Mark is staying in this hotel room. It's great. They're like, they're just off camera. She's like, clickety, 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 clickety. He's here. Found him. Smash cut, they're there, outside his hotel room. Literally Go smash on. cut with there with a gun in her purse. The mom has a gun in her purse. By Triangle Square. Damn, I see you came prepared. And and I love this. The the private eyes like they won't open the door if they see you have a gun. So she puts it in her purse. And then they knock on the door and the, the, the girlfriend walks up and just immediately opens, doesn't even look out the people, just opens yep. the door and just yep. like opens and walks in. You need to tuck that thing away. They're not gonna open the door if they see that thing. Yes, how may I help you? And this motherfucker, this move, this is the end of the film. It's amazing. <laughs> they walk in. They're like, oh, she's like, oh, I'm Mark's mom. And they hug. And then Mark walks out of out the shower. shower. Mom pulls out the, the gun. gun. Mark picks up the kid. Hey, buddy. And yells, no. 
and mom shoots. Mom. And we get a dead child at the end of this movie to, uh, to a nice little bow on top of everything that has the, else hey, has gone crazy in this film. The literal ending of this film, there is no denouement. The ending of this film is the mom shoots at Mark, but accidentally hits a two-year-old child, killing it. With The last shot of this movie is a two-year-old bleeding to death on the floor, and then we <laughs> fade to credits. I am not... <laughs> Joking, that's how this movie ends. Why? <gasps> that's how this movie ends. That's how this movie ends. <laughs> I... I have no words for this film. It's the weirdest oh. thing I think we've ever watched. It's, you know, it, it, at times it reminded me the way it was shot and sort of the, the writing reminded me of an Alex Maisonette film and sort of the drama of it. But this is so above and beyond the, the like. It happened, it happened 60 days later. Are you sure it was 60 yeah. days? Yeah, it was 60 days later. <laughs> yeah, 60 days later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It remind, yeah, the obsession with time and when things happen is sort of similar to an Alex Maisonette film. But this movie is bonkers. It's It has everything and, and, and nothing at the same so time. So what I was wanting to happen. Okay, what did you want to happen? And I, gave, I would be giving this writer too much credit. <laughs> but after he meets up with the blind man and he says, your life is going to change right. and stuff like that. If... If something happened where Mark goes blind. And the reason for that being is not only is it a reflection of the blind man that is right. giving him the information. It also works with Oedipus Rex. Oh, yeah, yeah. That would make sense because I did. I was talking to Katie while we were watching this. I was like, what's the what's the plot of Oedipus? Like, what happens in that? And she's like, well, first off, he doesn't know he's banging yeah, his mom. Yeah, that's the thing. She's like, he doesn't know he's banging his mom. I was like, okay, so it's not the same thing. No. <laughs> I was like, it's not this. No. I was like, is because I thought at the beginning, I was like, is this like a modern day? Is this like, oh, like, you know, is this like a modern day retelling of like Oedipus? But it's, it's not hmm. um, at all. I guess still he's not the good guy. I think he gets like his comeuppance by having his child murdered. I do I? I'm done talking about this movie. I was massaging you. On my freaking tits? Don't ever do that again. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know what to give it. Because it is good bad. Yes. But it's also not. <laughs> like, it's... Yes. There's so much that I, there's so many times where you're sitting there watching it where you would not like this wouldn't be one you would turn on like at a party. Let's watch this. Like it, there are moments of that, but you need to cut out about 20 minutes of like violent sexual assault because it is horrifying and awful. Yes. And like not not like a fun like riffy like. <laughs> I, I'm not going to lie. I whenever you sent me this and I skimmed through and I watched like the very end of it, I said. Yes, we're doing this just for the ending scene. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. The it's way this insane. ends. Insane. It, it, and, and like the dad-son fight, there's like nonsense that is hilarious. And the acting, or the acting's okay, but the dialogue's terrible. It's shot terribly. The audio quality's terrible. It has the a lot editing of, is god-awful. The editing's awful. It has a lot of great, good, bad stuff. But there's, I gotta give it bad, bad, I think. I'm leaning towards bad, yeah. bad because of it's just, you couldn't watch it as a good, bad no, movie. It's just no. too depressing and awful. Like, it's just not, no. you couldn't do it. You, you could, like, recut it and take yeah. 40 minutes yeah. out of the film yeah, you and could, make it kind of wacky. Yeah, yeah, you could cut out 40 minutes and it would be good, bad. But as is, it's uh, depressing. It's just wildly depressing. Uh, so that's it for the 71st episode of good or bad or bad bad as always you can support us on patreon where we're recording a podcast episode right now we're going to talk about aquaman spider-man into the spider-verse and glass i saw two of those kyle saw one of them if you want to hear our thoughts on them go check out our patreon feed for two dollars you get access to the podcast and you'll hear that episode where we talk about that i have a podcast called this film is lit where we talk about movies that are based on books the episode that is out when this is out is bird box uh it just came out two weeks ago we talked about bird box it's not a very good movie not a very good movie, um, but an interesting episode nonetheless. Uh, and our next episode is Minority Report, so check that out. Kyle, you're on Twitch. 
Uh, yeah. Sometimes yeah, you switch I, more I, often I, than I do. Yeah, because for my computer's fucked. Computer's I, don't, I can't. <laughs> I can't stream. I tried like twice, and it just does not work lately. Um, but you can follow Kyle on Twitch yeah, at yeah, and you Kyle can watch underscore GB or probably Bobby. play Hitman and and end up accidentally killing everybody. Yeah. Also, make sure you follow us on all the social media. We have Facebook. We have Twitter. Uh, we have a subreddit. I think technically um but you can follow us on those because i post pictures and and sort of random non and like fan art and stuff that i don't always get into the episodes uh you can check them out and find them there um because like i said i post random stuff on there so Uh, follow us on all those things the movie i worked on yes is that out still don't know anything about it great uh interviewing monsters look for that in in, although in blockbusters near you although (laughs) although amazing part amazing part is tom green who is star stars in interviewing monsters is now on the celebrity is celebrity Big Brother. All the bizarre things. <laughs> yeah. And and our 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 production team was like, this is the greatest thing that could have possibly happened. <laughs> because now we got a whole bunch of stir for Tom Green there and we're coming out with his movie. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. The movie's something. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Uh, I don't think we have anything else. So uh, until next time, keep watching movies. Just, just not 365 days. Damn. <laughs>